Last week, Barry City Council voted to proceed with the multi-million dollar sports field despite continuing concerns about the lack of transparency and ignoring the environmental impact of the project. Yeah, I believe that we've heard from uh, um, many people that they feel that there was not proper communication on this issue. Um, I think we've all been inundated by correspondence from residents that are confused on the rationale for changing the official waterfront plan strategy. They went through extensive community engagement and um, this uh, field kind of, the sports field for many kind of came out of the blue and I would like to see um, be able for our residents to have more input and uh, and being able to maybe ask more questions of staff. We too believe that the city of Barrie needs more public spaces, more recreational spaces for youth and adults, and that the sea cadets need a safe place to meet. We are, however, opposed to the development of a multi-use sports field and parade ground at the Allendale Station Park. Tonight, we have not heard why that is the only location. This sports field goes against Barry's 2023 waterfront strategic plan, and I quote, the area is to provide visitors with educational experiences through exposure to native wildlife, plants, and natural hydrological functions. All waterfront changes need to be inclusive and it recommends no changes that negatively impact the environment should take place. The waterfront strategic plan did not advise bulldozing a forest field habitat, replacing it with artificial turf and fencing it in. There is a significant loss of natural habitat proposed in a way that completely bisects the forest and grassland area. This development's sizable fenced-in sports field with a gate would be accessed only by a few rather than by many. Hi, I'm Deepak and you're watching Simcoe Community Media. The council also approved the relocation of the sea cadets to South Shore and the development of a permanent space for them. Both projects would cost more than $9 million. Ward 4 councillor Amy Corsar proposed deferring the sports field motion for further public consultation due to insufficient communication with residents. It would be something like a public meeting that would go forward um, as uh, any development would, to have a uh, spot on the website, to have a um, uh, virtual meeting, to have people to uh, be able to ask questions, and um, just generally would we would with any development going forward. Her amendment was seconded by Ward 8 Councillor Jim Harris. The proposed sports field is located in Harris's ward. He has faced protests from residents who oppose turning a public space into a sports field. A change.org petition opposing the sports field has gathered more than 3,500 signatures so far. Mayor Alex Nuttall's support for the sports field ensured the approval of the project. Only Councillors Corsair and Harris voted against the project. I do want to highlight a couple of things that came in this week. Uh, the first one, Councillor Hamilton, Deputy Mayor, and all of Council for supporting, uh, taking a look at a, a smaller footprint uh, where possible, I think makes, uh, makes some sense. Um, Following is the video of the meeting. It's moved by Councillor Harris and seconded by Councillor Kungle that motion 24G112 of section C of the general committee report dated May 8th, 2024 concerning sea cadets relocation to South Shore be separated and in reintroduced as section J. Councillor Harris, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nettle. Um, certainly as uh, we uh, learned last week and, uh, and uh, again tonight, these are connected items, but they definitely have distinct entities in and of themselves, and I think for the purpose of tonight's discussion and votes that they are best served to be uh, separated and uh, dealt with individually. So uh, I think I've had a chance to um, speak to people about this, and I feel confident and comfortable that we're, this is the way this needs to go, so hopefully uh, folks uh, see the same way. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Any other comments or questions on the matter? Seeing none, all those in favour? It carries. That will be reintroduced as Section J. So the amend, amended motion 
uh, as on the floor is only allowing for the debate regarding 24G111, which is the Waterfront Allendale Station Park multi-use sports field and Sea Cadets Parade Ground. Are there any other questions or comments? Councillor Corson. Yeah, you'd speak to it now. Okay, I have an amendment to the motion on the floor uh, that motion oh, it's moved by, sorry, um, myself and seconded by Councillor Harris that motion 24G111 of selection, Section C of the General Committee report dated May 8th, 2024, concerning the Waterfront Allendale Station Park multi use sports field and Sea Cadets Parade Ground be deferred and to be deferred, sorry, it's been rewritten here, be deferred for further public consultation to be undertaken at a cost of up to $5,000 to be funded from the reinvestment reserve. And I can speak to that. It's moved by Councillor Corser and seconded by Councillor Harris at motion 24G111 of section C of the general committee report dated May 8th, 2024 concerning the waterfront Allendale Station Park multi-use sports field and Sea Cadets Parade Ground be deferred until further public consultation can be undertaken at a cost of up to $5,000 to be funded from the reinvestment reserve. Whoever wrote that has very clear writing because I was able to actually read it. So that's a, that's a first, Madam Clerk. Uh, the floor is yours, Councillor Corson. Yeah, I believe that we've heard from uh, um, many people that they feel that there was not proper communication on this issue. Um, I think we've all been inundated by correspondence from residents that are confused on the rationale for changing the official waterfront plan strategy. They went through extensive community engagement and um, this uh, field kind of, the sports field for many kind of came out of the blue and I would like to see, um, be able for our residents to have more input and, uh, and being able to maybe ask more questions of staff. I know I have absolutely inundated staff this week with questions and I know that they haven't been able to get back to me on all of them and no doubt because I know they're very busy and I have given a lot to them this week and I would feel much more comfortable moving forward with this if we could have much more engaged community um, involved in these decisions. Thank you Councillor Corser. Any other comments or questions with regards to the motion to defer uh, Section C Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nettle. Um, obviously, public consultation is always a, a positive thing. Just kind of curious, because obviously it doesn't get very prescriptive in your amendment. What type of public consultation are you expecting? I know staff have done some, maybe not to the extent that all would like. Um, just kind of curious as to what are you expecting from staff with whatever levels of pu public consultation, just because you haven't really prescribed anything in the amendment. Councillor Corser. Yes, um, I believe we had a uh, quick conversation with Ms. Banfield earlier, and it would have uh, it would be something like a public meeting that would go forward um, as uh, any development would, to have a uh, spot on the website, to have a um, uh, virtual meeting, to have people to uh, be able to ask questions, and um, just generally would we would with any development going forward in our city. And uh, I can ask Michelle, uh, sorry, Miss Banfield, if she could maybe give a little more clarity on that. Through you, Mayor Nuttle, to Councillor Harvey, um, staff had said that there was engagement that was part of the program that should the approval for the project go through, there was always going to be engagement. Um, when we were talking about it briefly this evening, um, staff thought perhaps what Councillor Corser was talking about was an open house that we could promote on social media and 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 see who would attend. Um, we haven't really had a lot of time to formulate what that might look like. So, so I see the hands. The floor is uh, not yours at this point, Councillor. Uh, so, Councillor Harvey. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Nuttall. Just to follow up that to uh, 
to staff. Um, now, without this amendment, would the intent of the staff report and moving forward with the due diligence that obviously needs to be done um, ahead of this being finalized, other than the financial piece of it um, being voted on tonight, would that not all anyway include something like an open house like that what you've just prescribed and I'm just not sure whether there's a need to defer this if that staff's intent anyway through you Mayor Nettle to Councillor Harvey uh, on all parks projects there are engagement opportunities um, as it's just all part of it so I think this is just about moving it before some of the other work as I understand it Councillor Harvey? Yeah, maybe if we can just get some clarity from Councillor Corser then as to what her intent is with this, because uh, it seems like the public consultation piece is going to occur either way, um, and this may s potentially just drag things out a little bit longer, but uh, not that we're in any rush. Councillor Corser? Well, uh, yes, thank you to Councillor Harvey's point. I hope that we're not in a rush, because um, I believe that it's been 12 days that this has kind of been out in the public realm, and it is a significant change for our waterfront, and it is uh, a lot of um, confusion regarding already plans that have been, like I mentioned, well discussed and with m a great amount of public engagement into what was expected of this, this space. So voting on this this evening um, kind of negates um, the public input that was put on our um, waterfront plan that was put in place in the first place. So I feel that we're um, not being able to really engage our residents on this decision. Um, and uh, I think that's an important piece moving forward on this space. Because if we vote on this this evening, then we are voting on having a field or not having a field. And I'd like to see more residents involved in that conversation as a whole. Thank you, Councillor Corser. Thank you. Thank you. It's Councillor Harris is next. Okay. Thank you, Manetta. And I want to begin by thanking Councillor Corser um, first for the for the amendment um, and also for attending the meeting on uh, Monday with the ANA and also uh, Councillor Hamilton was there and Deputy Mayor Thompson as well. So thank you. I, th I think one of the things and you know we get the report and open it up and read like you do and one of the surprises was that the staff didn't have time for the consultation. So I think from my perspective on this ask it was just to it was to course correct that piece where um, if it had been done I think that would have been a better outcome for all of us so I think for me um, and we've heard tonight from residents that um, that's one of the pieces that they really saw was important and that it changes this application or recommendation changes the plans uh, and uh, that a key item uh, and we have this as many of our larger items we have a discussion and we have a consultation with residents, especially related to the waterfront. So that was really the spirit of it, to move it to the, kind of back up that step where it didn't quite have time for staff to do this. So that was the spirit behind this uh, request. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Morales and then Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, Mayor Nettle. I'll go to the Executive Director, Ms. Banfield, but before I do, for the main question, I just want to touch base with uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Bradley, who, who's in the audience. Mr. Bradley, there's a lot of similarities between the public consultation that's being discussed as part of this amendment and what happened at Painswick Park. I just want to quickly confirm with a simple yes, no, as appropriate. As appropriate. Were you present for the community open house, if you will, at the Painswick Park um, when the city of Barrie had a couple tables, Bristol boards, and was gathering feedback from the community that attended on how to the, the minutia of the detail on how to redevelop the Painswick Park in Ward 9? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me, yes. Perfect. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, Ms. Banfield, it's my understanding, and I just want to clarify, lots of people who are attending, it's been a long night, uh, nuance is important. It's my understanding the public consultation for this kind of park um, re-envisioning uh, can occur after the decision has been made. So I just, I don't think anyone's implied it directly that you forgot your staff. So I, I but I definitely want to sta uh, stand up for staff here and clarify. It's my understanding that public consultation on, you know, uh, minutia of the details, uh, are there 
covers on the lights or there are the various aspects. Those can happen in the form of an open house, even after council has made the decision, either through a formal motion or through allocation and earmarking in a budget. Is that a correct understanding? Yes, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Mary Nettle, I just think uh, I respect count members of council uh, wishing to get more information. Um, I have a different opinion of this. Uh, I was 11 years old when I was part of uh, the Sea Cadets uh, for one or two summers as uh, for uh, Chambly, and uh, it's long overdue. So I just wanted to stand up and be very clear and get a direct uh, clarification from staff um, about the fact that public an open house can still occur um, even um, after a decision has been made. So just wanted to be abundantly clear on that. Thank you, Councillor Morales. Uh, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, and through you, Mary Nettle, uh, and thank you to Councillor Cursor for, for bringing this forward. I think it allows good dialogue to really look at what are the pros and cons of a deferral and what it is we're trying to achieve or, or to not achieve. Again, I'm all for public consultation as well. Um, you know, I think we could probably host two, three, four nights, and we still wouldn't reach a, a consensus where everyone's going to be happy, and I think that's the difficult position that we're in. My concern is with more and more consultations is we still have unanswered questions. And if this consultation does not include consultation with the LSRCA, Lake Simcoe Regional Conservation Authority, with um, our indigenous uh, consultations, with the archeological investigations that have to occur, uh, with the ecological impact studies that need to occur, like I'm not sure we're gonna be able to offer much more to our residents. The way I read the wording in the motion, it says that we're proving a concept to guide the planning, the design, the construction. There's so many more steps that have to be taken. And I think it was just doing a public consultation. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get any, any more. Like I have also sent you know, staff dozens upon dozens of questions in the past couple of weeks, but also since last June, because you know, I will say this has been out there since last June to different levels. And I agree with people in the crowd uh, who may not have seen it or heard it because there was no concept, there was no design brought forward. So there was nothing really to look at. And so unless you're following closely um, or you know, signed up to one of our newsletters, you might not have, have seen it. So that's, they're no fault of anybody's. And I've heard that feedback and I agree. And I, I think you know, it, it's meaningful for us to know that too, going forward, how do we make sure everything gets out there that's important to people. I know Councillor Negusi has brought forward an idea of, of returning the paper and I think that's great. We should revisit that. But I'm just not sure at this point more public consultation without the investigative work that needs to be done with the experts in all these different areas so we can get the answers to some of the questions that we have and to appease maybe or maybe not appease some of the concerns that have been brought forward. So for me, I respectfully, I think I'm, I'm comfortable still at this point in improving this uh, this evening and not going with the deferral because I just think I'm not in a rush, but I'm not sure what information I can provide to residents without doing the investigative work. That's part of this next step. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hamilton, any other questions or comments with regards to the deferral motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of deferring the motion? All those opposed? It doesn't carry. I would ask members of the public to, again, have the same respect that the youngins did. We teach them to do that. So we probably need to act that as well. Um, it certainly does start with me, and that's why I try to make sure we have decorum in this room and we show it the respect it deserves, sir. Thank you. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go back to the main motion, and that's with regards to 24G111. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor, do you mind if I ask a couple questions first? Is that, yep. is that okay? Um, Ms. Banfield, I, I went down to Toronto last night, and uh, I showed a, a, a field last week. I don't need to bring it up again. Um, that exists there and uh, I'm guessing it's three or four hundred meters from from their uh, waterfront um, maybe less than that maybe more than that I, I don't know uh, when I got there there was I'm guessing like 120 people playing various games and activities and um, something that kind of struck me when I was watching was it didn't feel like the, they were playing on the width of the field, not the length of the field, to, to open it up for like a lot more people to play. 
it didn't feel like a field that was 120 meters or, or larger wide. And when I looked at, I mean, they play everything at this field. It's not one sport, it's kind of everything. And when I looked at the widths of our facilities, I felt that maybe they were a lot wider than was perhaps even needed. Um, so looked at BMO Field, which I think is 68.5 meters wide, and then ours at 120. And I'm just wondering, um, is there a possibility we can go and look at the width of the field? I know this isn't a final concept, uh, but I think what we have heard from residents throughout the last few weeks, and I would say, actually, we've heard from residents all along in the sense that those who came and said they wanted to plant more trees, et cetera, uh, is, is the tr preservation of, of trees. Is there an opportunity to go back and look at the width of the field versus other facilities elsewhere? Mayor Nuttall, uh, absolutely, as you pointed out, it, it was a concept. It is on uh, shown on page 14 of the staff report in Appendix A, shows the different sizes. Um, so certainly from the concept, uh, staff did provide um, the, the size that a lot of these fields are ranges, is the easiest way to say it, and we did provide a, a future-proofed um, multiple use size, um, but even as an example, the City of Vaughan uses a different calculation than the City of Ottawa, than the City of Brampton, so uh, absolutely there is the ability to refine the, the width of and the size of the sports field as more and more studies are um, undertaken. The second thing that I heard um, from, from residents was regards to the fencing. And uh, it's also something I witnessed last evening uh, that, that buffers are required. Um, are there other opportunities rather than just fence uh, to put in place for buffering um, the, the park itself from, let's say, let's say there is no reduction in size and, and it maintain, is maintained the same, you have a path next door. Uh, so is, is there any opportunities to look at other buffering options? Uh, Mayor Nuttall, so, you know, one design objectives is going to be to mitigate the impact of the fence, and that can be done through a se selection of materials. We could look at step stepping down the fence in particular areas for a smaller height, in particular along the waterfront trail, as an example. We can look at strategic planning, uh, plantings. So, um, you know, the fence heights would, are, are going to be typical of, of what you're going to see, um, but as I said, th there's certainly going to be some opportunity to look at the design of the fence um, in the overall context of the area. Wonderful, thank you. I uh, appreciate that. And if you can take that as feedback, <laughs> maybe look at some of these fields that are uh, just open always to the public and uh, see if there's, there's opportunities to refine, as you said. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, on the motion, um, so so there's a couple things. I understand for some some people it's a little bit difficult and stuff and I was looking back at you know we talk a, a lot about public engagement and stuff so I went back to read some of the uh, engagement from the waterfront uh, strategic plan and some of the key things were increasing access to the waterfront increase in recreation opportunities increase in reason for people of all ages to come to the waterfront increasing year-round access reasons for people to come to the waterfront, flexible in the space at the waterfront. And I truly believe that this proposal actually hits every one of those. I think by doing the multi-purpose field, we've heard a lot of organizations talk about extending into December. You know, unfortunately our winters aren't like the old winters. With the artificial turf, power sweepers, remove snow, which extends time. So it's actually achieving so we haven't got off of the actual strategic plan. I understand that there was some naturalization and stuff that, you know, concerns people that were removing it. But I, I think with 
you know, I think it's about 35% of that area if, if I pasted. And so I went back, I met with the residents on Saturday and, you know, I took a wheel out and stuff and it looked about 35% of some of the naturalization, which is leaving a lot of the buffer still. And uh, so I'm a little bit complex about the, like, this has been in the public. Like, and, and we received the report, I guess, two weeks from yesterday, uh, tomorrow. We have no idea what staff are going to say. We, we don't get an advanced copy of staff reports. So we direct staff to revisit when the master plan come in June. And we ask staff to engage with youth, look at options, change things. That staff report could have come out and said, there is no possible way of doing this. So there's no opportunity for the engagement without the, the report. And I know some people believe, and there was some deputations that, you know, the backroom deals and there's none of that. Like, it's, it, you know, when they don't like the answer, it becomes personal attacks, you know. And I look at some of the stuff. So we talk about the naturalization. And for people who are paying attention and read stuff, and I have an email here because I asked for it. I think it's page 205 of the capital funding for 2024. We're going to spend $11 million on flood mitigation. We are going to expropriate homes. We're going to dig hundreds of trees. We're going to put storm water management, storm water, water management ponds to stop some residents like if they believe in naturalization, you get flooded when you build in floodplains, which isn't fair, but that's naturalization. And, you know, they're asking every resident in Barrie to pay that $11 million. You know, and I look at it. I, I mentioned to the residents about the basketball courts, the volleyball, or the, yeah, the volleyball court on the other side and how active it is. And then it's the space isn't this, it's not that. It's actually allowing people to go and enjoy elite fields. Drive around Barrie. Not every basketball court's full. Drive by the waterfront, it's full all the time. Because people want to enjoy that and experience the outside and embrace our gem. So for that reason, I will be supporting this. And unfortunately, like I said, it's sad that it's become... The, them against us and you've heard the you know the booing or the clapping it, it we make tough decisions but i truly believe that the members around here truly believe that they're doing what's best to move this city forward and i'll leave it at that thank you deputy mayor i'm going to go uh to councillor morales and then councillor harris and then councillor harvey okay i gotta make a list <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, Mayor Nuttall, um, after hearing the feedback from uh, the residents and, and some of my colleagues so far, um, I'm of the opinion, from my personal opinion, that if we continue to flesh out uh, this idea, Mayor Nuttall, what was that? What was it? It was at the task force you were on on the uh, relocation, right back in the early 2000s. If we continue to flesh this out with committees and exploratory groups and consultation on this, I have a very real concern that it will result in another lost decade or two of letting the unachievable perfect get in the way of the good. And that is something that um, is not something I, I want to allow it to escape. I actually uh, went over uh, Beautiful Berry. I'm sure a lot of people here know in the crowd what Beautiful Berry is. It's a history book of our city that goes up until the mid 2000s. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll update it. I actually was given a copy uh, by former Mayor Lehman on my um, first day when he uh, uh, back in 2014 and I made a, some section I made some uh, sections here uh, Mayor Nettle and this is really important to this debate here I'm not just kind of going through a history book but I kind of am because history is important I see young people here I see not so young people I'm not gonna say old um, but what I see is wisdom and passion so going back to Mayor Aspen great wisdom you we can vehemently disagree but we've got tough choices. We're all trying to do the best. I don't think there's anyone here, 
and even to the person to the people I disagree with the most I don't think anybody's here going I want to make the city worse so once we got that off the table we all know we're trying to do the right thing even if we disagree that puts us in a great situation and learning from history is important and specifically here at Mayor, uh, Mayor Nuttall one two three four um, in the 1930s and 33 disaster struck uh, to bury it's in agricultural park because the building of the arena skating rink at the time that was insured uh, had a fire and even though it was in the depression era a plan to replace the building went forward specifically uh, the advance noted as a county town should not have a should have a rink in keeping with its status and there's no reason why it should not so why am I reading this it's that resiliency of Barry to continue I'm going to keep, for, it's going to keep making sense uh, the more that I quote, and I'll go very quick. Um, in the 50s, uh, Beautiful Barry says that the YMCA opened up in the former Legion premises on Owen Street in 1958. Then in 63, the city sold a portion of the Grove Street Swimming Pool Park to the YMCA, despite objections that the site was uphill and too far from the downtown, a $500,000 funding campaign was launched to build the facility, and the facility was completed. That is really important because so some of the feedback that we heard was put in another location, right? There's already existing fields. Uh, it, it doesn't have to go into downtown. But back to the deputy mayor's point, there's a reason why we're all gravitated towards the downtown, whether we're cycling, whether we're walking, whether we're driving. Uh, it, it's, it's the jewel. It's the soul of our city. And even in the 1958, in a book uh, that was obviously clearly uh, communicated here, um, was saying that even there were concerns back then. And uh, later here, I, I want to read a specific one. This one most people obviously know. It's that by the close of the 20th century, Barrie had over 241 acres of public parks, including Heritage, Centennial, Allendale Station Park, stretching all along the waterfront from downtown at Mulcaster to Minettes. Allendale Station Park was developed out of the former Canadian National Railway Service Yards. And the picture that got shown, these were rail yards, these were tanneries. Barry, the, the theme here is Barry continues to evolve. We evolve in how we are shaped. We evolve in the people that make up our city. I believe in the early 1910s, it said we were at six, 7,000 people. Uh, and we evolve in our priorities. We evolve in what we value. And in 1994, um, I was a year old, then 1903 former master mechanics and store department building was incorporated into a new community and rec center, the South Shore Community Rec Center. Did not know that. Right? There, there's, 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 there's continues to be um, a history of, of, of giving from the community. And I love this quote here. Barry has a long history of urban beautification and civic improvement. And in an earlier page here that I uh, missed a bit, with the removal of the railway in the 90s, the city of Barry continued with its commitments to preserve the waterfront as public parkland and to encourage residential development downtown within the former industrial areas. Mayor Nettle, why the history lesson? Because there's a lot of people here with wisdom, with decades of experience, and with insight. But that also means that there was a page leading up to chapter 17 that said, Barry, the most progress uh, a progressive city. And it was a specifically a picture of Centennial Park, which was a vision that a lot of people had in the 50s and 60s of taking little private cottages and rail yards and putting them together for public ownership. I think this is a very important step in that evolution. I think we need to activate uh, our waterfront. I think the sea cadets, um, well, and thank you uh, for Mayor Aspen on a bit of, I didn't know it, so it's a history lesson to me about the commitment um, that the ANF and a couple of other groups made. Um, when I said last week it was a tin can, it wasn't disrespect. That is great, the people that supported it, and we're here to get it to the next step. So uh, I am not just going to vote in favor um, of this. I am very proud to vote in favor of this and uh, excited um, to see this move forward. Thank you, Councillor Morales. I'm now going to go to Councillor Harris. Great. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, it's been a uh, busy couple of weeks, uh, let me say that. And uh, maybe one other thank you that I didn't uh, offer was thank you to you for meeting with ANA and uh, with me uh, last week on short notice. And also, uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson mentioned the Nets Point group you met Saturday. Wind and rain, not too much rain, but uh, thank you for doing that. Um, greatly appreciated. Um, maybe I just want to say, uh, start with the agreement. What I heard tonight was um, clear support for move from the sea cadets. I heard 
a support for a multi-purpose field, not here necessarily. Um, investing in our youth, I heard that very clear. I heard that we love our waterfront. <clears throat> and I heard it was important to build our community. Building community was really important. Um, and uh, I don't often find myself on the other side of the uh, um, supporting a youth initiative. Uh, that's not where I generally find myself in, in my life and the things that I do and the things that uh, make up me. Um, and I really appreciate the young people. They spoke so incredibly well, um, and it was quite compelling. And I hope that they also recognize that the people who spoke um, with concern about this uh, field being here in this location did so, maybe with one exception, but um, all those uh, did that with great respect for um, our young people and the need. I mean, if Barry Soccer ever needed a mandate for multi-purpose field, we'll come to Ward 8. I have lots of people who will sign that effort to put a multi-purpose field somewhere other than South Shore. Um, so, and I, I, and I think, um, you know, um, as, we, as we look at this, I think, again, um, the deputations were all compelling, and, and I think they were well done. Um, but we have a very um, uh, diverse and um, wonderful lakeshore that we're all proud of. And I think, and I, and I, I appreciate the history lesson from uh, Council Morales, because it points to something as we evolve. And, and one of the great evolutions of the South Shore, I, I'm a very kid, I like saying kid, but I'm not a kid anymore. Um, but that, lake, that road wasn't there, that South Shore road wasn't there when I was a kid. Um, you rode your bike down as far as Tiffin Street. Um, so part of the, the evolution is that it was reclaimed as naturalized area. Like, so what a positive evolution that as we activated much of the lake shore um, and we'll be redoing um, heritage in the near future, that this part of the lakeshore was able to be the naturalized side. And when I met with residents and you know, heard a multi multitude of um, uh, rationale for their position, um, what really resonated, which really was the foundation was, we believe this should be the naturalized part of our wonderful waterfront. Um, and that's enough. I mean, I think for most people, that's, that's the reason. Um, will soccer work? Will there be enough private, uh, too much uh, private use, not enough public use? That really isn't the issue. Um, the issue is preserving the nature, natural state of that part of our lakeshore. It doesn't exist around the other side. And, you know, 100% um, agree, I, I missed their sample, I, I have to say. It. My berry was very similar to your berry. Dunlop Arena was the king. Queen's Park was the queen, uh, king for baseball, and uh, riding your bike down to the government docks was, uh, was a good summer day. Um, so it's, it's really, uh, for me, it's uh, really uncomfortably the, on the opposite side of recreation. I mean, I don't have a vote for recreation and one vote for naturalization. I don't have a vote for youth and a vote for... Um, uh, uh, neighborhood associations, I, have, I get one vote. Um, I have one vote for Ward 8. And um, thank you, Ward 8. You've been um, very clear and um, in your effort uh, to communicate with me. And, uh, and I hear clearly from our side uh, for Ward 8, the clear prevailing sentiment is we support sea cadets moving. We support multi-purpose fields, youth. These are, you know, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandparents, uh, they support that activity fulsomely, but just not here. Um, I think that's clear. And, and, I, and I even, you know, so that's, that's, you know, as simple as I can put that position, I think there's all kinds of, other, and I get, you know, respectfully in trying to understand this from both sides. And really thank you, Ms. Young, for uh, complimenting my ability to see both sides. It's sometimes a blessing and a curse, but I think, um, you know, I believe in the statement, he was, only knows his side of a case, knows little of that. So I think it's really important that um, we understand both sides. I think people did a good job tonight of uh, respectfully um, conveying both sides. Um, and so with that said, I, I, um, from the perspective of the Nets Point neighborhoods, which is closest to this place, um, the Allen Neighborhood Association, which is obviously very much um, 
connected to this space and, and with what happens to our waterfront and all those who believe in, you know, leaving the nature there, um, allowing it to um, uh, be enjoyed by both people and through the wildlife that uh, call that area uh, theirs as well. So, you know, I, I encourage other members of council, you know, I, I love sports and I, and I, and I, my vocation in, includes uh, supporting youth. Um, but can we find a different place uh, is what I would um, encourage. And I, rep I understand, and we mentioned this last week, this is a part of the city that's everybody's. I know it's in Ward 8 and it's got Ward 8 on the agenda, but I respect that it's a city uh, issue and a citywide um, consideration. And, and, uh, but I think for, uh, from my perspective, from what I've heard, and again, I want to thank everybody for taking the time, um, especially knowing on Monday you weren't going into a meeting that was, we're not sure about this, <laughs> for uh, Councillor Hamilton and Councillor Corser and Deputy Mayor Thompson, you came to our, the meeting and, um, and to listen to people, and, and I think that's uh, incredibly commendable. Those of you could make it understand. So, um, you know, it's, again, I won't repeat all of the details of the why, and thank you to everybody who did that, and, um, and those who came from wide and far, I had an email exchange with Ms. Dr. Gonzalez last night, um, so I appreciate him weighing in from his uh, spot in Berkeley. Um, so, you know, another th the other th one thing I do want to say, and, and um, if this does pass, I have confidence, I have confidence in staff, I have confidence that um, everything will be done to mitigate any potential negative impact, and, um, and so I don't have, I don't wear that fear. Um, but I think from my chair, from Ward 8, um, being responsible to listen and learn and represent, um, I'm confident that uh, from my, the feedback that I've got, which has been considerable, that the residents of Ward 8 are in favor of leaving this in a natural state. And I think um, that's what I would implore uh, members to think about as you adjudicate this for yourselves and for the ward and obviously for Mayor Nuttall, you look at the whole city. Um, but uh, I would implore you to think about that piece. We've been able to move this place back to from a rail yard, home of a rail, rail yard, to being a wonderful naturalized place. So uh, with that said, I thank you and um, I hope that uh, you're able to see this as a, as a gem as it is, and uh, all in on supporting multi-purpose fields and sports and youth and recreation, all the good things that come from that. The young people were right. There's so many protective factors to sport and recreation. It's a good thing for you, so keep doing it, keep playing, keep kicking that ball, throwing that ball, uh, and all those things that you do to, to keep yourself healthy, well, and connected to other people, um, but maybe just not here on the South Shore, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Uh, Councillor Harvey, you're next. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall, and uh, well said, Councillor. Uh, obviously, you're in an extremely difficult position uh, yet again with uh, something that is very Ward 8 related. So uh, kudos to you and the way that uh, you're able to uh, deal with both sides. Um, I, I think it's really important, first of all, because I know there's, as has been mentioned, some comments about how we knew about this. I saw this the same Thursday that you guys saw this. I had no idea this was coming on the agenda. I knew there was discussions with the sea cadets that had been going on for a period of time, but they were, had gone on years ago too and never came to fruition. So just so that way it's quite clear there was no backroom deal because I'm the chair of finance. I know Councillor uh, Hamilton's the chair of infrastructure, so maybe she saw things sooner than I did. But I can tell you right now, as a chair of finance, I did not see this until it became a public item. Um, I was actually quite surprised, though. Like, I'm in Ward 7, down in the southwest corner of the Holly area. I actually only had a handful of my residents reach out to me. Um, one was in favor, the others were opposed. But then when I explained the process, because maybe it wasn't clear enough in the staff report about the process moving forward that this isn't, if this does pass, this is not a done deal. There's still so much more that needs to be done, including further public consultation, which can be also take place at the same time as the due diligence that needs to be done. Because I think the biggest hurdle that this thing is going to be going through 
is whether or not there's any issues with the Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority. Um, because of where it's situated and it falls under their uh, purview. Um, and that's why I did not vote in favor of the deferral because I didn't see that the deferral was going to accomplish anything other than maybe delay things. Um, as Mr. Develis, uh, I too came here from Brampton just a few years ahead of you, 25 years ago. Um, and I noticed the same thing Mr. Develis noticed when he came here is that per capita, we lacked in recreation facilities, not just fields, just right across the board, you name the sport, per capita, we were definitely behind from what I was used to as a kid growing up in Brampton. Not once did I ever, throughout my AA and AAA years playing hockey, uh, have to go at 7 a.m. before school to have a hockey practice because there was enough ice time available that we could always have our practices after school, opposed to cr crawling out of bed at the crack of dawn and then having to go to school for the day. I did attempt one year at soccer, but I was horrible, so I quit that pretty quick. I know we've only heard a lot about soccer, um, but what's being proposed is a lot more about other sports too. And the key piece is the fact that this started as a parade ground and then when it was looked at as the size that was required for a parade ground, and it was almost the size of a football field, well, the best use moving forward to capture the most amount of residents and actually get full usage out of it would to then be looking at, is there enough room to expand it a little bit and then create a sports field? And that's really how this has come about from reading the staff report. Um, we, we look at around the other parts of the, the waterfront. We already have sports going on there that will actually complement what's being proposed. Is the waterfront the best location for it? I'll be quite honest with you, I don't know. But that's why I'm willing to vote in favor of this, to let staff do their due diligence, to let the public have their input moving forward, and to see where this goes. Because essentially that's what this tonight is all about. Tonight's not rubber stamping, it's not 100%, it's providing funding so that way the next steps can be taken moving forward. Because um, when you look at it, we've already got basketball, we've got hockey, and we've got volleyball going on around uh, at Will Dwyer Park throughout the, the 12 months of the year. Um, the other piece of this, if this does move forward, from a sports tourism perspective, because I do sit on the tourism board, it actually does very much align with sports tourism. And obviously we, have a, we haven't seen the report yet, but there is a sports tourism strategy that will be coming out in the next month or so, I anticipate, that may or may not support this location. But we've got 300 restaurants and 12 hotels that potentially could benefit from the tournaments and other things that could be brought into the city because now we actually have access to a premium field. Because the other issue is the other turf fields that are available, one's owned by the college and one's owned by the school board. And the reality of it is they're not quite as accessible as a city owned facility. Um, other than that, I'll leave my comments at that because uh, I think that pretty much highlights where I am. And, and even when I explained the process to the people that were opposed to it when we had those conversations, then they understood as to, okay, this isn't a rubber stamp. There's several other steps that are going to be taking place. And who knows, maybe this won't get approved <laughs> with a permit through the Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority. I have no idea. I, I sit on the NVCA, which is, uh, covers the other end of Ward 7, um, but obviously that, I think, is going to be the biggest hurdle, um, let alone um, potential other uh, studies and samples that uh, would have to be done. So those are my comments, but I will support uh, the direction here tonight and, uh, and see where this uh, takes us after the due diligence period is done. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Point of order, Mayor Nuttall. Yes, sir. 
um, just in light of the time, just so we don't stop the debate once it gets going and stuff like that, if we could just move a procedural motion to extend. So move to have a seconder for the motion to extend. Councillor Kungel, uh, all those in favor, it carries. Uh, we'll now go on to Councillor Corser. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, to Councillor Morales, I know that book well. I grew up with it. That and several others have always been on my parents' coffee table. And uh, I just wanted to thank everybody that came out tonight because obviously this is a very important topic. And as mentioned, there was, uh, it is in Ward 8, and it is a very, a lot of passionate residents from Ward 8 were involved in the conversations. I'm Ward 4, and I was, I received countless emails from residents within my own ward with concerns about this waterfront project and the impacts it would have on our waterfront and our city. So it's not just Ward 8. There's, there's, there's conversations across the city, and that is why I think it's an important conversation to have. Um, I did some digging with staff's assistance. Thank you so much. I want to thank staff for all the <laughs> emails I sent them and all the questions and all the convoluted things that they were probably trying to figure out what I was trying to ask for and trying to pull this all together. And I, w I looked at the, um, uh, the staff report from March 18th, 2019. And it was kind of an inventory. It was an outdoor recreation facility study and the 2017 updated to 2019 uh, Parks and Recreation Growth Strategy. And I went through it. And I know that our city's changed significantly since 2019 just because of the impacts of the pandemic and the amount of growth and affordability and all the things that we've been facing in our city since then. Um, but the scope of this report, the scope of this strategy, um, this study, apologize, the scope of the work focuses on the following major recreational components, arenas, indoor aqu aquatic centers, gymnasiums, fitness spaces, dedicated space for youth and older adults, and sports fields. Now, in the report on page three, um, section 11 of the analysis, the facility type, which falls under recreational fields, soccer, football, rugby, et cetera, which would be a multiple use field, a total of four rectangular fields should be constructed to redistribute underperforming low quality fields in existing areas to improve access within Hewitt and Salem and surrounding area. There's no mention of the waterfront. At the city's discretion, the provisions of a 5v5, which I do not know what that means, or 7v7 field templates may be provided within the neighborhood parks on the basis of facilitating unstructured neighborhood use and enhancing geographic distribution. So um, I received a few emails from residents that pointed out parks in Ward 4 that were underutilized, one specifically that I am told was historically used as a soccer pitch, but had not been used for years. Um, of course, with all the landslide of questions I gave to staff, um, that question was asked and they had to get back to me. And honestly, they no fault of staff because they were significantly busy in this. Um, so I, there's, there's a couple of fields in my ward that are abandoned soccer pitches, possibly. When I get that information back, I'll let you know. Um, so w w the money that we'd be putting forward to this project, I think would go a long way to revamping, bringing up our fields that we have that are not used in our community. As we need more than one field. Our sports, our youth need sports 
facilities. Like, there was no doubt. I will tell you that one thing I've learned tonight, that we have been sadly neglectful in that sense. We are growing by leaps and bounds in this city, and we are not supporting the youth sports fields that need to be supported, and this is an example, because it is quite evident. I always say, I'm not a sports mom, but my friends are. I, I have heard it all this week. Um, and I know that it is desperately needed. I would like to see a facility that would be year-round. I would like to see multiple fields. I would like to see something that actually supports our youth in a much more rounded way than to have one field on our waterfront that allow one game at a time. I don't see the motivation of having that one space to have one field that doesn't have the, the exercise rooms, the change rooms, the, the, the amount of parking. Our waterfront has expensive parking. And if you're not from this city, then you have to pay extra. And I know that the people that come, not all the sports teams, are actually from the, the people that play on these, these teams. Are, a lot of them are not from the city of Barrie. So they will not have those waterfront parking passes. So parents have to pay on top of that to get their kids to play these sports. And it's expensive and it's ridiculous what sports equipment costs and everything else. There's an added cost on top of that. Plus the pressure of parking. Plus the pressure, and, and I know that will be more parking added, but as it states, as we talk about this, our, our, our uh, residents are growing. Our population is growing. And there's going to be more and more pressure on parking at that waterfront. Let me be clear, this is not about the cadets. I, a thousand times over, vote for those cadets to be in a safe place. And I've spoke to that before because I see it and I'm a sailor and I know it and it is a dangerous place that they're in and they need to find a safer place and I am all for them going to the, South Shore, the, the General Hater South Shore Community Centre. I am all for that. I'll be first in line. I will grab a shovel, help build. But I just don't see the, the importance of having a field that I know staff will do due diligence in all sense, but it is a naturalized area. It should remain a naturalized area. We have conversations about all the people coming to our city. Well, it just... It, it, I, I made notes as I was hearing people talking that as a city we have failed, well this is my note, we have failed to support our youth sports. I'm also hearing that we have a rowing club there, kayaks, canoes, recreational path, naturalized spaces. I would, if anything, I would like to see along with the cadets. I would like to see something like, we're going to have all those towers, as people like to say, at the waterfront with no gardens. How about a community garden in that space? How about green space for people to actually look down on and be able to access? Because this may be accessible to the public, but it's not really completely for all the public use. It's a sports field. So I, I am not supportive of that. And I find it disappointing that um, the conversation, as other people have mentioned around the table, I find it disappointing that this, this single-use field that will only support two teams at a time, one game, as opposed to moving it somewhere else or putting that money to invest into other fields around the city that are underutilized or not used as it is now, um, I find it disappointing that it became framed as anti-children or anti-sports anti because there are kids in the city that do not play sports or do play sports, but they deserve to have a future that they have a naturalized piece of land on our waterfront. They can have their sports field anywhere, but this is a naturalized piece of land on our waterfront that we should be preserving for our future. Um, there is, as uh, and I think I am, as I tyrant on, uh, it, is, it is important for us to support all of our youth, and part of that is future naturalized spaces, places that they can go green. We all know the effects, we've all heard it, as well as sports is good for mental health, so is natural spaces, trees, green spaces. We know that, and we're losing them every single day. So, and, and, and environmental considerations, we can't give away the last corner 
of our waterfront that's naturalized. I, I can't, I cannot state, I, I cannot support that. But as far, like I said, as far as is moving the cadets to a safe space, I, I'm there with a shovel. But I, I'm not going to support the, this, the sports field as it is now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corser. Uh, next on my list, I have uh, Councillor Reema. Thank you, uh, Mayor Nuttall. Um, I think that as a result of the discussion that we've had tonight and the last couple of weeks, um, there are two things that are really clear. Uh, one of them is that um, there's a real need for more sports fields, um, either here or elsewhere in the city. Secondly, um, there's a real need for the uh, sea cadets to uh, be relocated. And I think we have certainly found a solution um, for them at the South Shore Centre. And I think with that comes a, um, a, a parade ground. Um, I think we tonight had a, had a lot of opinions. We heard a lot of opinions. Um, and certainly in the last week or so, um, I've certainly got lots of emails and phone calls about it. And I'm sure each one of us has had that. So we're having um, a vigorous discussion. And I must say that uh, Ward 1 <coughs> is, is no, not shy about uh, letting me know about what their opinions are. Um, they never are. Um, and we've had, we've had quite a discussion. And I'd like to thank um, Councillor Harris for his role in this. Um, he's been a leader um, to uh, move this discussion along. And I think we're going to have more discussion because when uh, I asked uh, Mr. Bradley last week, and I think uh, Ms. Banfield um, supported that again tonight, that um, as the work gets as gets moving forward, we're going to have further discussions around this table, but also um, with the public, uh, and and there will be discussions and opportunities for open houses and and the like. And I think there are um, quite a number of things that we have to still work out the details on. Um, I think the whole environmental question, I think that needs a, a fair bit of work. Yeah, um, and. Of course, our, we can't ask our staff. We can't expect our staff to go out and do that work without us, without us saying to them, "Go and do it," and this is what we want you to start looking at. I, I think that there certainly are opportunities to uh, look at the size and how how actually um, this uh, field is going to fit into the area, um, and I think we're doing. Uh, yes, we are going to remove some trees. I think likely. Um, but we're also adding trees and uh, renaturalizing an area. And sure, that's going to be, you know, some smaller trees at first, but, you know, give it a bit of time and they'll, and they'll grow. And I think that if we involve um, Nature Berry and, and the bird groups and those kind of people, I think that we will get a good result uh, there and we'll get it fairly quickly. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of this um, because I think it's something that a growing city like ours needs. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Reitma, uh, Councillor Hamilton, and then Councillor Kungle. Thank you, and through you, Mayor Nettle. Um, I, I just want to give a, a shout out to Honorable Mayor Aspen, and I never thought I would say that, <laughs> given some of the history there. But his last comment saying that we're in a difficult position and we're doing the best we can, I just really appreciate that sentiment. When I heard all the deputations tonight, I had family in the crowd, I have friends in the crowd, I have neighbors in the crowd, and they're on both sides of the, of the field. Uh, I have a son and daughter. My own family sits on different sides of this. My daughter is an active athlete. She would jump up and down if you put a field anywhere. My son is a photographer and loves nature, and we have spent the last few nights taking pictures of the fox's den and the new kits, and that's his passion. So this has generated some amazing dialogue in my own home, and I just really do appreciate everyone coming out tonight and hearing all the perspectives. This is a challenging decision. I think tonight is very reflective of what I've heard in my own ward as well. Uh, I've tried to meet with as many residents as, as possible, and I think... You you know, you have the folks that are all for it. You have the folks that are, don't touch it. It's naturalized area. 
And then you have the folks that are somewhere in the middle uh, that have genuine concerns that I believe we're going to hopefully deal with over the coming months as we get into the investigations. And as we know, those investigations may stop us in our heels, I'm not sure, uh, but I think we've heard enough to, to go down that path. I do want to say there's also lots of misinformation out there. And a lot of the questions I've gotten over the past week um, are, are just not accurate. So I appreciate those coming out tonight and being engaged and being informed and asking the questions. And I encourage over the coming weeks, contact your counselors. We're continuing to ask staff the questions, but let's not spread misinformation. Let's not spread rumors. Let's not spread fear mongering. I appreciate there's different perspectives, but let's make our opinions and judgments on factual information as opposed to some of the rumors out there. It's just, it's just not helpful uh, or conducive to productive conversation or to getting us to the right position that is in the best interest of the majority of residents. Um, so with all that being said, uh, I do have an amendment and I, you know, I think I've heard loud and clear as I said, there's those on opposite ends of the fields and there's those in the middle that just have genuine concerns from an environmental standpoint uh, that I said there's still some due diligence to do. But I think if we look at the footprint, what Councillor Reitman just said and what Mayor Nuttall just said as well, uh, I would like to propose an amendment and I'll, should I do that now? I know we have one more speaker. So I'll, I'll do that now. Um, that motion, sorry, moved by me and seconded by Deputy Mayor Thompson, that motion 24G, uh, 111 of Section C of the General Committee Report dated May 8, 2024, concerning the waterfront Allendale Station Park multi-use sports field and Sea Cadets Parade Ground be amended by adding the following to paragraph 1. To ensure that the field meets the minimum size requirements to accommodate the sports identify and to minimize impacts to the surrounding environment, including tree removals. And I, I think I've spoken to that, but really it is, you know, putting it back to staff to really look at how do we position and place this and keep the footprint um, as, you know, neat and tidy and as small as possible to be effective to accommodate the parading and the sports, the multiple uh, sports that we've discussed tonight, but really to be mindful of the naturalized area uh, and make sure that we're not creating any, anything that's more grandiose than it needs to be. Uh, we've heard again, social media, people talking about sports complexes and compounds, like this is not what it is. It, it is a field, it is a multi-purpose field. Uh, so let's not make it any bigger than it, than it needs to be. It's uh, moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Deputy Mayor Thompson, that motion 24G111 of Section C of the General Committee Report dated May 8, 2024, concerning the Waterfront Allendale Station Park multi-use sports field and Sea Cadets Parade Ground be amended by adding the following paragraph to paragraph, following to paragraph 1. Quote, to ensure that the field meets the minimum size requirements to accommodate the sports identified and to minimize impacts to the surrounding environment, including tree removals. Councillor, I'll take your comments already stated uh, on, the on the file. Uh, any other comments with regards to this amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? It carries. Back on the main motion, I have Councillor Kungle. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. And um, I mean, on that, happy to support that because I think it shows our intention about mindfulness on it. But to the broader piece, I would say on balance for those that maybe don't feel that the vote will go in your favor, stay engaged um, because I think we, we are listening uh, and we, we do appreciate that, but also especially with some of our environmental groups uh, or those that have reached out that kind of said it's, it needs to be nothing. Um, so I don't, the location is the problem. Um, I, I've heard you as well on that and, and I guess I would say for me, I'm comfortable enough um, giving a head nod in favor of the location being acceptable. Um, and so for me, it's looking at, um, I was impressed with the staff report that came back last week. I already believe that there will be great mindfulness about not being more grandiose than it absolutely needs to be to be a functional site. That tree preservation naturally is coming out of, I think, values of staff that have worked on multiple programs, so happy to support that amendment, but also it's not a concern I have. Um, and, I, and I struggled with this a little bit, but I still feel quite comfortable saying, you know, uh, staff have been incredibly accessible on this, but when I look at, you know, 
testing my feelings about location, which is why I didn't support the deferral um, for more information, is because I, 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 am, um, I am okay with the location. Um, and part of that is, I think, because I'm looking at that waterfront strategic plan. It's been quite recent in 2023, having heavy engagement and also being something that staff really guided uh, and I think take to heart. I think staff that are tied to this project for me, I have great confidence in knowing that they know the environmental groups involved. They will do uh, a, a good engagement process. They will open up opportunities for input, um, that it will be balanced. So the Vimy trees, as an example, they're not thriving. Um, they're also looking at balancing this with the removal of them to a location that, that will be suitable. There is, for me, a, a really comprehensive, balanced approach to what has been brought forward that I quite respect. Um, I know some groups have reached out and individuals have said, there's no field identified for the waterfront in your waterfront strategic plan. And I would say, you're right, uh, there's not. Um, but if I look at you know what's occurring across those 10 kilometers of waterfront capacity, how people love that space and want to stay in that space, balancing out different needs of different groups, I would say um, the site, as I understand it, fits a facility test fit, or else it wouldn't have even come forward as an option. Um, the proposal around continuing with bike racks and water fountains and accessible trails, um, we can talk about naturalization. I completely respect groups to say, just leave it as it is. But I also see that you know these, this is not a space that people are necessarily dog walking through poison ivy. Like there are some problematic areas in that space and I think it's come on balance with maintaining active, um, passive approaches in the surrounding area. And that I think when this comes to public consultation, also looking at how do we add biodiversity into the surrounding space around the field. So the pillars, um, and there's three core ones in that waterfront strategic plan, um, I think come into balance with actually what's been brought forward. And I'm comfortable enough to say, let's, let's go and see what then happens next around investigating, are the conditions appropriate? What's the other research? How do we bring this information back to the public and design something that actually is, is possible uh, if it's appropriate? Um, but I'm okay, and I believe Councillor Harvey did a nice job, actually, um, for me, around talking about process, which is we need to give directions to staff about whether to go or not go. And that's then when a lot of the consultations and the investigations will occur. So for me, I, I am saying, uh, I think it's for, on balance, I, I have great confidence in staff to lead into who needs to be involved in input giving feedback along the way, but also that we, if we are looking at this space on the waterfront, it will be done uh, in a mindful and appropriate way that respects, um, I think, a variety of different interests, but absolutely uh, balancing that with environmental considerations. Thank you, Councillor Kungle. I'm now gonna go to, I have no other, Councillor Ngusi. Thank you, Mayor Nadal. Yeah, like Councillor Harvey, I have received a few emails, some support, some against. But uh, there is something I feel compelled to address unequivocally. Mayor Nadal, members of council and guests, one of the most beautiful aspects of human existence is our ability to come together through sport. Sport go beyond boundaries of race, religion, and socioeconomic status. It's a universal language that speaks of love, friendship, peace, and pursuit of health and happiness. I find it confusing that anyone would seek to undermine or oppose something as fundamentally unifying as a sport. As an immigrant from Africa, I have experienced directly the power of sport to bridge diverse and foster inclusion. Soccer, in particular, holds a special place in my heart. It's a game that requires a little more than a shirt, a shoes, 
and the board make it accessible to people from all walks of life. Yet despite the universal appeal of sport, far too many children in our city are denied the opportunity to participate due to economical barriers and lack of sport fields. We all have witnessed that the heartbreaking reality of talented children and young individuals excluded simply because of the lack of financial means or access to a proper sport facilities. That's why this is necessarily that we recognize our responsibility to ensure equal access to sporting opportunities for all residents of our community. As I said it before, change can be sometimes be challenging. And this is one of those instances. Our city has undergoing significant transformation and change is an ongoing process. Mayor Nadal and members of council and guests, I believe this issue would be significant if we, would, if we were to allocate this specific waterfront location to a private investor or a special interest group. But that's not our intention. What we are proposing is that this project will be funded primarily by the development communities and public money intend for the benefit of the entire communities, by the people, for the people. I honestly believe today's the decision, this decision is crucial in safeguarding the waterfront location for the next at least 50 years or beyond for our future generation. For that reason, I strongly support this staff report and uh, direction, and thank you all for coming. Thank you, Councillor Nagusi. Are there any other comments or questions from members of council? Seeing none, um, I think most of everything's been said. Um, I do want to highlight a couple of things that came in this week. Uh, the first one, Councillor Hamilton, and Deputy Mayor, and all of council for supporting, uh, taking a look at a, a smaller footprint uh, where possible, I think makes uh, Makes some sense. I'm certainly not wanting something bigger than BMO Field on the waterfront. Uh, I, I th don't think that uh, was was even the intention of anybody who who was asking for this. Uh, but at the same time, I'm thankful that our staff have gone and put the largest footprint out there uh, because it, to me, shows uh, in some ways, uh, the, depending on which side you're on the best case or worst case scenario and allows us to be able to then uh, hem in and hone in uh, from there going forward. I was asked about other locations uh, when Councillor Harris and I met with the uh, Allendale Neighbourhood Association last Tuesday and I asked the same thing. What other locations? And one of the responses was well, why not at Huronia Park where the current fields are? And if you've ever been to Huronia Park on a weeknight in the summertime, um, watching your kids or grandkids play, uh, you probably have to walk five or 600 meters. Uh, I, uh, as, as many know, uh, was hurt in an accident a couple of, uh, 18 months ago, 17 months ago, whatever it is now, and, and I have to walk that far to get in because there isn't sufficient parking for the two to three sets of games that happened in the evening for one age group because that's how little we have in terms of uh, access to uh, fields in the city of Barrie for our young people. At the same time, it was then proposed, well, why don't we build this where the forest is there? That was actually said in the meeting. So I look at this and go, that's an interesting proposal. You know, put the whole thing where forest is. I think it's Whiskey Creek that runs through there. Or I can be corrected if it's not. 
Um, that's not really a great alternative. Today I was on the phone with um, somebody in the, the Manettes Point area on White Oaks Road and uh, they proposed the Gables. It's like, really? The 45 acre parcel of preserved space on our waterfront? You know, a tornado hit there, right? But that's not the place for it either. Uh, it was also proposed by that person that the sea cadets shouldn't be going to the, to the sorry, it's going to take me a while. I think it'll take everyone a while. Uh, the General John Hader South Shore Center. And uh, instead, they should be over at Tyndale Park. And I explained that the only access to the water, real access to the water at Tyndale Park, is a beach. And that beach is used by thousands, I'm going to say tens of thousands of kids every summer. So I'm going to call up uh, Miss McAlpine and say cancel all of the kids programs uh, at the beach. You know, we're going we're gonna to move the cadets there. It's not going to be for anyone else anymore. It doesn't make sense. And the struggle I think that everybody is having is you know, when the same people who are saying it's an environmental issue are telling me to build it on a couple of forests, I got an issue with that. Because that means to them it's not an environmental issue. There's people in here who it is an environmental issue too, so I'm not putting everyone in the same category. The noise. These are symptoms of where people sit on the issue. The real issue that people have is not if there should be a park for kids to play in, but where should the park for kids to play in be? And I fully accept anybody who says, this is the wrong place for the park. I don't agree with you, but I fully accept and respect that position. What we need to do as a council is we need to make sure that no matter where it goes, and in this case, I believe there's going to be a vote tonight in favor, that everything's done to mitigate environmental concern around it. That everything is done to make sure that the landscaping is done in an appropriate way for the place that it's going. That there aren't a whole bunch of items and flashing lights put into people's bedroom windows. That it isn't turned into a place that disrupts the community, but a place where people can find community. And that's my hope. I don't know at the end of the day that any of us actually have all of the answers to all of the questions. What I do know is during that meeting with the Allendale Neighborhood Association, I was corrected. I told them that in September we started discussing this matter and I was provided with newspaper articles from June saying we started discussing this matter and I had actually forgotten it started three or four months before that. I've done many interviews on CTV, many interviews with, uh, with the gentlemen who are at the back right now on this subject. And I can tell you if there's one thing that I'm feeling we are missing right now, and Councillor Hamilton and Councillor Ngozi have alluded to this, it, it's a local newspaper. And we don't have the budget to go around every decision we make, running around and making sure that it's on every front door in the city. The newspaper used to do that for us, right? And then the letters to the editor would take place. And then the, you know, conversation would grow and it would kind of meander through all of the concerns and, and the positives. It just doesn't happen anymore because of that change to local media. And if there's one thing that I've learned over the last 10 days, 11 days, whatever it is, it is that we need to figure that out. We really do. And so I'll be supporting this as, as I don't think there was any question in anyone's mind when they came in here tonight where, where I was at on this. I'll be supporting this, but there's two things that I will be looking for. Number one is how we address this going forward, and I'm going to speak with Ms. James Reed in the next couple of days in terms of being in charge of communications at the city on how we can maybe 
we're not going to make up for a newspaper, but how can we find ways to get into people's living rooms? And the second thing is, how do we make sure that both the sports can happen and uh, the environment is protected to the greatest degree possible? Uh, with that, I just want to also let everyone know, because there was some concerns on costing, it's like, well, where's the money for the environment versus the money for the, um, for the sports field? Uh, I checked this week with, with Vala, I believe the, and, and actually with Michelle, I asked you both, and you both came back with the same answer, so that's good. Um, <laughs> that, that there's about $350,000 set aside right now to plant trees in this city, and I believe that we estimated the cost of a tree planted is about $500, meaning there's actually enough money in the bank right now to put 700 trees out. And so there is funding also set aside uh, for the environment. With that, I will call the vote. And record the vote, please. Record a vote has been requested by Councilor Corser, Madam Clerk. Over to you. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I'm going to start with Councilor Rima. Yes. Councilor Nixon. Yes. Councilor Kungle. Yes. Councilor Corser. No. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Yes. Councilor Nagusi. Yes. Councilor Harvey. Yes. Councilor Harris. No. Councilor Morales. Yes. Councilor Hamilton. Yes. And Mayor Nuttall. Yes. Vote carries. That was the update from the City Hall. Thank you for watching.